This is the problem beautiful array. It's labeled medium, but it's decently hard. At the end, we'll come to a one-liner solution. But to get to that point, we need a lot of understanding and a lot of observations beforehand. Let's instead first talk about the problem itself. The problem says that given a number n, you have to find a permutation of 1 to n numbers. So in case n is 4, you have to find uh, all of the permutations of 1, 2, 3, 4, which satisfy a particular condition. And the condition says that no such k should be present between i and j, which holds this condition true. Which says that nums of k times 2 is nums of i plus nums of j. To explain what it means, uh, let's consider this permutation of n equals to 4 itself. This condition is, this permutation is invalid because there exists an i which points to 1, a j which points to 3, which is equal to 2 times k which points to 2. There's also another case which i is pointing to 2, j is pointing to 4, and k is pointing to 3. In that case, this condition is also true, which means that this is not allowed. What is allowed, however, is another case, as we can see here, 2, 1, 4, 3. Now, the naive solution takes order of n factorial times n cube time complexity, which is very bad, and I won't be delving deeper into that. You can look at my write-up for more details. But let's talk about and more optimal solutions. To get to that point, however, we need to know one thing. See, when you are stuck in a problem, I always like to think in terms of bits. That makes things a lot simpler. We can always say that either it's zero or one, either it's even or odd, so on and so forth. It makes things a lot simpler. Let's think about this problem in terms of bits again. Let's say that, okay, now when I say bits, I actually mean odds and evens here because that would be much more beneficial since there is an into two. Okay, so let's talk about odds and evens. Let's say that nums of i is even and nums of j is also even. Can you say anything about nums of k? Take a couple of examples and you'll find that there is no conclusive way you can say it's either even or odd. It could be anything. Okay, let's take the example of nums of i and nums of j both being odd. Again, can you say anything about the solution? Try out a couple of cases and you'll find that you can't say anything for conclusive. But what if nums of i is odd and nums of j is even? In that case, the summation would be odd and there's no possible way you can divide it by two. And so this condition would never be true, which means that this no would actually make it always false. What we're looking at is for nums of i to always be odd, and nums of j to always be even. If we can somehow ensure that, then there is no, nothing to worry about that permutation. <coughs> so how do we do that? How can we ensure that nums of i is always odd and nums of j is always even? Let's make it so. See, in the array, uh, let's consider the example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, just to demonstrate. You can split them out into 1, 3, 5, 7 and 2, 4, 6. Now, this ensures that if i is in 1, 3, 5, 7 and j is in 2, 4, 6, there is no such possible k which could make that condition true. And so you're always safe. Let's actually look at it. Cool. So let's take this example again and we'll represent the number in terms of bits just for convenience. We'll split them out into odds and evens and we'll notice something very interesting going on. See, the binary representations of it bring forward this point. Odds always have one at the zeroth bit and evens always have zero at the zeroth bit. This is very obvious, but it becomes even more interesting if you don't consider this bit. What if you don't consider this bit? Which means that you can basically right shift the entire thing. Uh, so you'll destroy all of those at zero bits and make everything smaller. This means that you will get to an array like 0, 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3 in this case. Does this feel familiar? 
See, for n equals to 7, this was a particular array you could start off with. For n equals to 3, this is a particular array you could start off with. This is a sub-problem which is very similar to the original problem. Because we were able to split them out into evens and odds and do a right shift, we were able to find a recursive property here. Because this 1, 2, 3 can be again split, splitted out and so on and so forth, we can do forever till we reach a certain point. We say that no more shifts are needed if there are elements either 1 or 2 in the array. In case only 2 exists, you can just copy paste it and that would be the answer. If there are 2 elements, again, similar thing you need to do. There is no more shifting that makes any sense. And think about it this way. Um, say i is pointing to 1, j is pointing to 3. There is no k in between because there are only two elements. Because this is like the base case for the recursion. So because we did a right shift, let's also do into 2 plus 1 here and into 2 here for the even case. And we'll get an array back. This array is the answer. What I've explained to you here is the recursive solution. It's based on a simple observation that the last bit could either be 1 or 0. And once you do a right shift, you can make that same distinction again of the last bit being either one or zero. You can do this again and again till you get to the very end. You get to the very end in this layer and you can just translate it back to get this. Uh, there is a one small uh, sneaky thing that I did. The right shift isn't actually needed. What you'd need is alternate elements. Think about it this way. What happened here, 1, 3, 5, 7. You look at alternate elements. You say if 1 here and 5 here are to be grouped at 1, 3 and 7 can be grouped as another one. I don't care about odd and even now. I just care about that. These are alternate elements. So 1, 5 paired together, 3, 7 paired together. What do we see at the very end? Look at this. 3 and 7 are again paired together. 1 and 5 are again paired together. We don't actually need to do this right shift or into the plus one or something. We just need to consider the alternate elements because we are still following this property of recursion. The code is actually very simple to do. Uh, so let's quickly do it. So we'll say recurs self and of array nums. Now, what do you want to return here? You want to return alternate numbers. So we'll return actually self dot records nums going from zero all the way up till the very end in the strides of two. This will ensure alternate elements starting from zero. We'll also add it with self dot records for nums starting from one again with the strides of two. So in this first iteration, it would get one, three, five, seven at one group, two, four, six as another group, exactly as we saw here in the odds and even split. In this case, we don't actually care about, care about the odd and even split. We just care about that they're alternate elements. Cool. So once this recursion is done, what do we need to do? Uh, we'll just call this cell dot recurs and we need to pass it a permutation of 1 to 7 so it's just a simple array i for i in range 1 till n plus 1 for a quick sanity check let's do this it's taking some time Oh, my bad. We didn't actually write a base case for this recursion. Was the base case going to be? As we saw here, if the length is less than equals to two, if it's one or two, return the nums as is because i and j are already fixed and there is nothing that could be changed in that array. So if length of nums, sorry, if length of nums is less than equals to two, return nums as is. By the way, if the solution takes a bit longer to understand, that is fine. Uh, it's very interesting because you need to think about this right shift coming into place here so that you can logically think about the problem. 
and then also think that that right shift isn't actually necessary all you need is the alternate elements anyways let's submit this again and cool so this works but uh, there is one last observation that we need to make and this is where the one liner solution can come into play okay this is based on the idea that we've considered level 0 and level 1 here right at level 0 we consider the zeroth bit here so 1 for 7 0 for 6 5 1 4 0 3 1 2 0 1 1 like so we've considered the zeroth bit in level 0 in level 1 we've considered the first bit because we did the right shift it actually looks like the zeroth bit here but it's actually the first bit okay let's look at what happens here in detail when you're starting off you have a binary representation like this what you do is you consider the zeroth bit you split it out into odd and even and then you do a right shift and you do this process again and again each time going from level 0 to level 1 to level 3 4 5 so on and so forth what you're doing is you're comparing from 0 all the way up till the very end this is the sort of exact opposite of what we do in sorting see while sorting you would look at the highest bit first and you can look at okay if the if there are n uh, if the number is n bit in binary you look at the n minus 1th bit for all of the numbers in the list and say that for all of the numbers having n minus 1th bit set those numbers are definitely greater than those with n minus 1 bit 0 unset and this way you can keep on doing this for from n minus 1 to n minus 2 all the way up till 0 what you've done is sorting but instead of starting from n minus 1 you actually started from 0 and you're going to 1 and then 2 and 3 and 4 and so on this should also clear up any questions here because we did odds and evens again and again and again considering the zeroth bit and then the first bit and so on and so forth this is why the right shift wasn't actually necessary it's just easier to explain and understand that way what you only need is alternate elements in this case but what we need here is to sort the strings which are represented in the reversed binary format let's actually code this up and this will be a simple one-liner solution okay how do we do this uh, i want you to return a sorted list of what a sorted list of saying uh, we'll go from range 1 to n plus 1 and this time we actually don't want you to go from like actual elements i don't want you to sort 1 2 3 4 i want you to sort the binary representations of the numbers i uh, will actually make it a lambda function taking the input x as the number and will return a binary representation of the number reversed and so this should work what we're doing here is we are saying okay start from the very end go all the way up till one but not including one so binary representation in python is starting from zero b and then one one zero zero whatever whatever this way you can get rid of the zero b and you will have by minus one going in the reverse direction basically so uh, let's do a sanity check here and then we'll submit this cool this works this should also work cool so this is how you get to the one-liner solution i'll hold the screen here so that if you want to look at it this is sort of the core logic behind this problem based on two observations first how numbers can be split out into odds and evens that themselves can be split out further the goal here being not actually odd or even but the goal being alternate elements the second observation being we've considered everything from level 0 to level 1 and then 2 3 4 and so on and so forth that leads us to the second observation saying that we can just reverse the binary string and then sort the array note that we haven't actually sorted in reverse order it's not uh, ascending or descending sort 
is just sorting with the key different. We're saying that the each element, each number, say five, is not actually five, but the binary representation of five reversed. Cool. So this is the summary and this is the problem beautiful array. It's a good problem and very interesting to think about. So that's it. Cool. Bye bye.